everyone, my lovely imps, once again, I have gathered you here to discuss discourse. A discourse that, as predicted by me, spiraled out of control. Now, some of you will know that I talked about the, the beginnings of this discourse uh, just a couple of days ago. Uh, I did a video uh, called uh, Philosophy Tube Was Right. Um, because, as it turns out, Philosophy Tube was right. Um, Abigail Thorne, aka Philosophy Tube, was indeed correct. And some of the, the internet's most vile cretins uh, crawled out of the woodwork to deliberately take um, Abby, aka Philosophy Tube, out of context to misrepresent what Abigail Thorne was actually saying uh, and to misrepresent the argument. And it was really gross. Uh, it's something that we've seen so many times. I talk about this issue, uh, which I like to often call context collapse, um, all the time. It, it's been a theme of my channel since the founding of my channel. Since the earliest days of my channel, I have been talking about how one of the most commonly used tools and one of the most commonly occurring events on the internet is this sort of remo utter removal or, dis or deliberate destruction, often deliberate, of context in order to generate a basically a cancellation or a dog pile or a bunch of harassment. Um, and uh, it's, it's uh, yeah, as Somniostatic in chat very wisely points out, it's part of the reason why we have begun the signal arc in which I often say, my lovely imps, can you hear the signal? And if you can hear the signal, you should press the like button and the subscribe button because we can use your help getting this signal a little bit stronger. The reason why I say that, um all the time is because I think it's, I think we live in a time of near derangement, uh, uh, persistent derangement, that if you expose yourself to the internet, which literally every person uh, in, in the society that I live in, I don't know about the whole world, but at least in America and a lot of the world, um, everybody's always online. People are online and they're constantly being exposed to information. But that information is often presented completely without context or with a subsumed con context, a context that has been replaced with somebody's agenda or somebody's interpretation. And obviously, to some degree, that's unavoidable. We all have our biases. We all have our own perspectives. We all have our own reads of situations. But what I'm talking about is something so much more radical than just having your own take. It's the fact that context can be destroyed completely and people's words attached to their real face and their real life and their real reputation can be completely spun out of control and out of their actual meaning and, of course, out of their context. And the signal, finding the signal, dispelling illusions, learning how to dig through information to find what is important is incredibly, incredibly valuable, which is why I ask, can you hear the signal? And also why I have, since I started my channel, made a very distinct effort uh, to bring things to you in context, to dive into the context of the things that I talk about on my stream, including what we're going to be talking about today. Now, I already did a video talking about uh, uh, Philosophy Tube's take that people got mad at. Um, the way that it is being characterized by many, many people is that, uh, uh, is that philosophy tube does not believe that gender dysphoria is real. And it is true that, uh, that uh, Abigail Thorne, philosophy tube, used the words gender dysphoria is not real. However, there is a context in which those words were said. And the context was 
uh, was to talk about how it isn't real as a medical diagnosis. That what people say, what people are talking about when they say gender dysphoria, the experience, the feeling of being at dis-ease with your body or suffering from the state of your, the current state of your body, that has never been contested whatsoever by philosophy tube. Um, but instead that, th that the, the idea that there is a sort of distinct, uh, medical thing that's called gender dysphoria that only trans people basically can experience. And we went into full depth. You can go check out my video on that if you want to hear my whole explanation of that. But let me just say that things have gotten a lot, lot worse. A lot worse. Now, real quick, for my lovely imps who've been here with me uh, uh, all along, um, you guys may recall that I have been willing to go on the record to defend... Uh, basically any trans person who experiences a dog pile, if I think that that dog pile is truly undeserved or if I think that it's going out of line with what they've done. In fact, many of you will recall, uh, that one of my earliest videos was a video specifically about how this happens to a content creator that many of us know called ContraPoints. ContraPoints is arguably the largest, uh, trans content creator on the internet. Uh, I don't know for sure if that's like, I, I don't know if you could ever come to an objective number for that, but ContraPoints is massively famous, okay? ContraPoints did a, was in a movie with Hillary Clinton. Um, like ContraPoints is a pretty famous person. And as a result, ContraPoints has experienced an unbelievable amount of dogpiling, of uh, mistreatment, of, uh, of being taken out of context. But unfortunately today, I'm going to be talking about a time in which ContraPoints has done that to somebody else. And uh, how it has kind of sparked an unbelievably, unbelievably toxic uh, cycle. Uh, a one, again, just a nut, the next level of toxicity um, online. I've been talking a bunch lately on my stream about how much toxicity there is online, that it has gotten so much worse. Not only has the rhetoric against trans people gotten worse, but a lot of the sites that people use to engage socially with one another online have made pretty significant changes in the last few years. And in some cases, like with Twitter, in the last few months that have just led to an unbelievable rise in general toxicity, in abusive behavior, behavior between people. Um, and God, is that not true in this particular case? My imps, we are a free people. I mean that you, the imps, you people, you, all of you who hang out here in this stream, you are unique. You are basically to pull from my star Wars arc. You are basically the Wookiees, you know, like, uh, you know, like, uh, Chewbacca. We here live on a lush, beautiful planet with a small population. Uh, you know, there's 400 something people watching right now, which is awesome, smaller population. But we are a free people. And we don't tend to fall in line uh, with uh, trends all that often. And often I irritate people because of my, my personal unwillingness to jump on board with whatever bandwagon is the flavor of the month. Uh, many of you will recall my video about Hogwarts Legacy, which has uh, attracted ire from both the anti and the pro factions of the, uh, of the uh, Hogwarts Legacy conversation, because I pointed out that actually um, I don't think that consumer boycotts are all that helpful and that a lot of the things, a lot of the arguments that people were making were not very good. However, that the people who were saying that like trans people were doing more harm to the world, uh, than anyone else by protesting or by trying to boycott Hogwarts legacy by, I said that those types of people were full of shit. 
and this irritated a lot of people. But I also think that I was correct. Um, and uh, so what I'm trying to say here is that I'm very proud of this community and I'm also a little bit proud of myself for avoiding getting involved in major dog piles. And that's what I'm hoping that we can also do once again today. Because I believe that I was right about my take uh, regarding Philosophy Tube. There was a lot of people who were being absolutely deranged, okay? I'm talking some of the most deranged shit I've ever seen pointed at trans people was being said at Philosophy Tube because of a tweet that could very easily be contextualized with a literal just scrolling up one tweet and reading what was in the original tweet. Uh, and people just refused to do that. They were just all too happy to jump on board uh, to the opportunity to tear down someone that they don't like a, for whatever reason. A lot of trans people are willing to do this as well. And I'm hoping that this time, in this situation, that we can acknowledge what's going wrong in the discourse once again and avoid being any of these toxic people engaging in these bandwagons. And instead, hopefully, our small but very powerful and very influential faction of the imps can help steer the discourse in some way or another to a better place. So let's talk about what, what actually happened, okay? Because there were two major incidents from two large figures um, that participated in this. Let me, I got the screenshot here. Uh, we'll talk about that too in a second, but of course uh, I have the actual uh, screenshot. Um, oh God. All right, here's the original tweet, okay? ContraPoints, uh, a absolutely massive content creator who is of course herself very familiar with being taken out of context and jumped upon, uh, decided to tweet, gender dysphoria is real. Now, um, I should be clear, this, this, of course, out of context, seems like, oh, well, what's wrong with that? You know, ContraPoints is just sort of stating her view. But of course, as we all know, this is in response to a burning discourse, a discourse that, had, that has essentially uh, completely taken over a large chunk of, of Twitter, especially LGBT Twitter, especially trans Twitter, for the last couple of days. Taken in context, there is no ifs, ands, or buts about, you know, uh, as to what this tweet is actually about and who it's referencing. It's very clear that ContraPoints is referencing uh, the the massive uh, uh, conflagration that, that, that started up around Philosophy Tube. And also, I have to say that the little smiley face at the end makes it pretty clear that she knows what she's doing, that she knows. And I, of course, this is just my read of the situation. I don't know for sure what's going on in Natalie's head. I don't know what's going on in ContraPoint's head. But to me, it seems fairly obvious that she knew what she was doing, especially when you consider that that tweet was allowed to stay up just long enough for it to go viral um, before it was deleted and in its place, oh, that has also been deleted. In its place was tweeted a gif of a mandala being wiped clean, okay? You know, you know what a mandala is? A mandala is a, uh, it's like a painting basically that is made with grains of sand. It's often done by religious practitioners. They take single grains of colored sand and they create a painting. And when you reach the end of it, you erase it because you, it's supposed to symbolize letting go that you put all this effort into an amazing painting and at the end you wipe it clean. And it, the idea is that you're not supposed to take any pictures of it. It is only supposed to exist in your memory and you are supposed to be able to let go, okay? Now, of course, that has now been deleted as well. Uh, I'm sure somebody could get a, uh, uh, you, could, you, could, you could probably uh, uh, find a screenshot of it. And I will say that is undeniably a funny thing to do to a certain degree. But let me also be 100% real with you. It's also remarkably cowardly. 
okay? It is a coward move to to weigh in on a discourse, on a dog pile, on an explicit dog pile uh, that was so obviously based on something taken out of context and then leave it up just long enough for it to ignite a discourse of massive, massive level of discourse. An incredible amount of people immediately jumped board onto this tweet and saw it as a form of validation of their harassment that they were throwing at Philosophy Tube, and then to just delete it and run away from it. Um, it's gross. I think it's cowardly. And honestly, I think it's spineless. It's not just like base cowardice. It's actual spinelessness. It's saying, yes, I know that I'm going to do something that is going to ignite an incredible amount of discourse. Uh, and while it is possible that ContraPoints has legitimate disagreements with Philosophy Tube, I believe that that is probably true. I can't help but think that there's some spite involved here. I don't, I don't know. Um, I don't know. It, it feels, it feels like a certain flavor of internet spite and cowardice. And of course, this was followed up by other people jumping on the trend. For example, uh, uh, somebody who I've had a lot of very nice conversations with, I'm saying that out front because I want this to be clear, I've had a lot of very nice conversations with Brianna Wu. Uh, Brianna Wu made the identical tweet. Brianna Wu made the literal identical tweet, and she tweeted it um, shortly after ContraPoints deleted that. Which again is seems to me even more obvious what's going on there. Um... And, uh, and, and then of course this devolved into an incredibly, incredibly toxic conversation. And, and I want to talk about some of the things that were brought up and discussed in this discourse. Um, obviously I already discussed the first part of it, which I'm going to restate for brevity and for clarity here. Uh, gender dysphoria, uh, as a diagnosis is treated as though it is a unique, uh, 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 a unique and distinct thing that only trans people can experience. And often the only thing that can make you trans, um, a, a lot worldwide, but especially in the United States, a lot of medical care that is allowed uh, cis people are able to access with ease things like basic hormone adjustments, things that are in fact commonplace to be prescribed. Testosterone uh, and estradiol are commonplace to prescribe, um, specifically to older cis people, older women who have gone through menopause, older men who are no longer producing the same amount of testosterone that they used to. They do not have to go to a psychologist. They do not need a diagnosis of gender dysphoria. They do not need any diagnosis really at all. Um, they can just go to their general practitioner and their practitioner will say hormonal imbalance. Maybe that will be their actual diagnosis. And then they will get their medicine that they need and that they want. Notice that uh, despite the fact that a minor hormonal imbalance, a postmenopausal hormonal imbalance or a age-related dec decrease in testosterone is not an immediately life-threatening concern, it is nonetheless covered by insurance, it is nonetheless not gate-kept via endocrinologists or psychiatrists or psychologists, and it does not have any sort of uniquely stigmatized diagnosis, even though it is identical to what trans people are asking for. That was what the discourse was actually about. And what uh, Abigail was saying is that gender, gender dysphoria is no different to what cis people experience. All people experience these feelings of unrest with their body to varying degrees. And we should accept that people live better lives when they have some level of control over their bodies. The argument being that as a medical diagnosis, is literally in a video that we're gonna watch in just a second, um, that, that, that 
this uh, di that this this Abigail said that this does not make any sense as a medical diagnosis. That it is needlessly medicalizing, and I agree with that. I think that Abigail was correct on this. In our current system, trans people are constantly invalidated. We are constantly told that uh, we are constantly treated with distrust. We are constantly treated with uh, outright discrimination. We are hyper-medicalized. We are stigmatized. Even though what we are fundamentally asking for is already provided and has been provided to cis people forever, for as, for as far back as it matters. Obviously, you can talk about when medications were invented, and but that's not neither here nor there. Okay. Is discomfort with one's body truly a universal experience? Uh, I think it's very close to universal, yes. I think most people at some point in their life will experience discomfort with their body. And for example, this is a, a, a an example, not meant to be a direct one-to-one -one parallel. Look at how intense the weight loss industry is in the United States alone. Weight loss is a one of the biggest uh, uh, well, wellness, pseudo wellness, uh, pseudo medical industries in the entire world. It's in massive. Tons of people feel discomfort with their body. Now, of course, the nature of this discomfort and the intensity varies drastically from person to person. However, we don't needlessly medicalize every single person who has any discomfort with their body. We don't even medicalize people who have uh, a significant discomfort with their body. They are just taken at their word and given tools to help with that. And of course, I could talk about all kinds of other things, how there are, of course, other groups that have similar issues. Um, like, for example, the, how so many disabled people are also stigmatized, that they are also mistrusted, that they are also treated um, like they are untrustworthy and that they are hyper-medicalized when all that they really want to do is find a way to live their life well. Um, and are often doing so, you know, relatively well-informed. Then we could talk about how this interacts. I could go at length and talk about, I'm not going to, but I could talk about, you know, how this ties into weight in general how people who are slightly overweight experience significantly more uh, discrimination in the medical world than people who are slightly who are slightly and even severely or dangerously underweight. That even being a little bit overweight can get you, and this has objectively been studied. I could go on about that. I have, I've done videos about it. But of course, this has become, the actual discussion here is no longer actually about any of the topics at hand. And both uh, ContraPoints and Brianna in this case intentionally, uh, or at least as intentionally as, I mean, yeah, as intentionally as tweeting something specifically with a, a smiley face that is that exists within a context, made it about a person and made it about a narrative as opposed to about the actual topic at hand by removing context, by deliberately avoiding and and refusing to engage with this topic for what it is and it's very it's been very unfortunate to see one of the biggest things let me talk about one of the biggest things that i that i saw being lobbed against philosophy tube for philosophy tube now keep in mind philosophy tube did not make any attacks against any individual person at all philosophy tube is the subject of this discourse Philosophy Tube became the subject of this discourse after the dog pile began. Philosophy Tube was not uh, arguing with a fig a, a, a with like a another content creator. Philosophy Tube was replying to an article that was written uh, that was published in a small medical journal and republished elsewhere. And Philosophy Tube was contesting some of the claims within that article. Philosophy Tube was simply engaging in regular ass advocacy. No personalities involved. Philosophy Tube wasn't attacking the writer. Philosophy Tube was engaging with the topic at hand. But the people who followed cannot claim that same thing. They did not do that. And in fact, the fact that they that these statements are about uh, about uh, uh, gender dysphoria is real is not even engaging with the actual 
the actual statement that was being made. It is instead a virtue signal. It is a virtue signal. It is saying, no, I have the right take on this issue. See, I believe in gender dysphoria, unlike that one over there. And let me just say, it gets a lot worse from there. One of the one of the biggest things that I've seen thrown against Philosophy Tube in this is calling Philosophy Tube a trans trender. Okay? That is a term that I had hoped would die out a long time ago. It is a term that literally plays into the the exact language of fascists. It is a fascistic idea. It is claiming that being trans is a social contagion and that there are trans people who are just in it for the trend, which is, of course, fucking absurd because I would love to see anybody able to produce anything about that. But secondly, it doesn't matter because injecting the idea that there are people, including popular figures, that are trans trenders is it has only one purpose, and that purpose is to instill doubt in the self-reported experiences of trans people. It is to further build the idea that trans people cannot be trusted, that they have an ulterior motive, that there is something uniquely deceptive about trans people. It is a disgusting thing to say to a trans person, and it is incredibly, remarkably, unbelievable, har unbelievably harmful to the politics uh, of trans people in the United States and the UK to, to f throw that term around at all, let alone frivolously. And yet it was getting thrown at Philosophy Tube like crazy. And in fact, Brianna Wu actually retweeted a video, a clip, an out of context clip by an account that was spending tweet after tweet calling uh, Abigail, an AGP trans trender. Now, I do not believe that Brianna Wu believes in trans trenders. And in fact, I know for a fact that Brianna Wu and ContraPoints both believe in what they call progressive politics. I know. Okay. But that is not progressive. It is not progressive to join in that type of dog pile. And it is not progressive uh, to uh, make the argument that, or to even grant credence to the argument that trans people uh, are somehow responsible for the oppression that they face. I wanna read you, um, I wanna read you a tweet real quick, okay? This one's still up, okay? Brianna Wu says, deleted. I'm not going to spend all day arguing with trans Twitter. It's fairly obvious our current strategy isn't working. We need to get back to electoral fundamentals, fundraising, legislation, lobbying, countering the right wing. It feels like we're on a course to oblivion. But hey, instead of that, let's try to explain to political normies why turf talking points are simultaneously right and wrong. And this, of course, was retweeted by, of course, this is a video that was made by an account that has spent the last few days calling Philosophy Tube an AGP transgender. Now, for those of you in the audience who don't know what the term AGP is, I'm going to let you in on a dark point of trans history, okay? Back in the uh, 1980s, a now disgraced sexologist by the name of Ray Blanchard uh, created a, uh, a typology, a dichotomy. Uh, he called it uh, Blanchard's uh, type, typology of transsexuals, in which he argued that there were functionally two types of trans people, AGP, aka autogynephilic trans people, and these were uh, perverts, in his words. They were sexually perverted, they were obsessed, they were sexually turned on by the idea of being a woman, and they weren't genuine transsexuals in his mind. And then, of course, what he called true transsexuals, 
uh, which he called homosexual transsexuals. These are gay, they were gay men that transitioned to become women so that they could be with men. And he believed those were the true transsexuals and they truly believed they were real. They had the real credit there. Now, of course, this has been brutally debunked. It has been debunked for a very long time. But there are people who, for one reason or another, uh, still engage with that debunked science. Science. Now, if any of you are scientifically literate in the audience, I encourage you to go and read about the methodology used for uh, Ray Blanchard's typology of trans people, and you will be shocked to discover that he didn't even use control groups. His science was accepted because he was one of a handful of people making declarative statements about trans people. I want to give you something else that Ray Blanchard also claimed. Ray Blanchard also claimed that trans trans men, there was no such thing as a fake trans man. Now, it's interesting. He's kind of gone back on that. But back in the day, he believed there was no such thing as a false trans man because he believed it was sensical for women to want to become men, but not for men to want to become women. I'm not kidding you. That was his belief, okay? Now, there are people, there are extremely sad and lost people on the internet who still use this terminology today. And a bunch of them have, of course, been using this terminology against uh, philosophy tube, including the person that Brianna Wu took this video from. This video, which now has 72,000 views. This tweet, which has 63,000 views, okay? But I wanna talk about other aspects of this tweet here. Because Brianna Wu is, let's just take a look here real quick. Now, once again, I wanna be clear. I have had a lot of very nice conversations with Brianna Wu, okay? I really have. And I think that Brianna Wu, at her heart of hearts, is, has good intentions and I believe that she wants what is, you know, I want a better world for trans people. But Brianna Wu claims to be a, uh, 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 a, a, a progressive, okay? But in this tweet, I'm gonna read it back again. It's fairly obvious our current strategy isn't working. We need to get back to electoral fundamentals, fundraising, legislation, lobbying, countering the right wing. Instead of that, but hey, instead of that, why don't we try to explain to political normies why turf talking points are simultaneously right and wrong? That is not a progressive argument, okay? It is not a progressive argument to blame the oppression that trans people are experiencing right now in the midst of an unbelievable moral panic, a moral panic that is based on nothing short of propaganda. The right wingers are pushing the idea that every trans person is a groomer, that every drag queen is a groomer, that every gay person is a groomer. They are pushing entire bans on our existence. Their talking heads are calling for our eradication, but our current strategy isn't working. This is some good old fashioned victim blaming. And moreover, it does not represent a, pol a pro politically progressive view of the world. It is not, it is a conservative argument. It is the argument that because trans people, which represent somewhere around 1% of the population or less, are not winning a battle immediately against a machine of propaganda that it is somehow trans people's fault and more so, almost almost even more offensively than it is philosophy tube's fault which brianna wu specifically draws a target on philosophy tube here no ifs ands or buts about this remember how i said that we're we're free kashik remember how i said that we fight for what's fucking right here this is not fucking right this is fucking bullshit This is a dog pile, a context removed dog pile. This is choosing somebody to light up another vulnerable person who did nothing wrong and lay the burden of a genocidal, maniacal, deranged 
political agenda on the shoulders of another marginalized person, it's disgusting. And this is the this is the type of shit, by the way, that I'm talking about when things cross from um, when things cross from uh, from just being infighting to being harassment and to being destruction. This right here is the exact type of shit that I'm talking about. And it's not it's not progressive. It's not progressive by any means. Nor, mind you, is arguing that we need to always play on the rules of a status quo that is killing us. And we know it's killing us. The status quo in this country, before this surge of anti-trans sentiment over the last few years was already not good enough for trans people. It was already leaving trans people without care. It, it's already locking trans people off from the care that they deserve, the care that cis people are able to get access to. And it's gotten worse. And this is being said that, oh, it's not because you're, 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 pl you're not playing the status quo game well enough. Your hyper minority is not playing the majoritarian money-based politics game hard enough. I think that is so anti-progressive. It's conservative. That is a conservative mentality. And I'm not saying for the record. Because I know that, of course, the the discourse, the context crushing machine is going to engage. I'm not saying that Brianna Wu is a conservative, but what Brianna Wu is doing here, the arguments that Brianna Wu is making here are conservative arguments. They are arguments that at best are, uh, are liberal conservative. And it's funny too, to be grandstanding on how our tactics aren't working while you jump on board to a disgusting dog pile of another person. And again, I will reiterate that Abigail Thorne, Philosophy Tube, did not target anybody. Philosophy Tube wasn't going after Brianna Wu. Philosophy Tube wasn't going after ContraPoints. She is being torched because they perceive her to be the wrong type of, of have the wrong type of opinion. She is being, the dog pile is being contributed to, uh, not because she got, this is not a back and forth. This is a one-way thing. You virtue signal the wrong way, time for you to get torched. Be, let's be clear about that. Okay? Let's watch this video real quick from Philosophy Tube, just because I want to show you, uh, exactly what is said here. And I want to get back to the point. Okay? Um, let's watch what philosophy tube actually says here and let's hear, listen very closely to the words that are actually said and remind, and let me be reminded that this is a 51 second clip taken out of a, who knows how long stream judging by the fact that this cup is empty. I'm going to guess that this stream is probably a lot longer and that there's been a lot of context here, but let's watch it. Let's watch the 51 second clip and let's see if what philosophy tube said was so egregious. Enoch Ethereal says, I feel like you mocked gender dysphoria, even though some people really do have it. Um, actually, my contention is that no one does. Um, my contention is, is that, in fact, no one has gender dysphoria because it's a category error. Um, so, certainly my intent was not to mock. Um, and I'm certainly... S I'm going to say I'm sorry if you felt that way. That's not a good apology, is it? Um, I certainly did not intend to mock. Um... But my, my contention is that no one has gender dysphoria because it does not exist. Um, I'm, if you like, a gender dysphoria... Can anyone hear that or is this too low? I'm worried that it might be too low. Is everyone able to hear that? I can hear it, but I don't... But my audio mix is different. It's a little quiet. It's fine. Okay. We are a theorist. Um, certainly there are people who are sad who, because there is a gap between what they want and what they have. I myself feel that. Um, but I do not think that that is... I do not think that that should be called gender dysphoria in a clinical setting. Um, I hope that helps. Did you notice? Did you notice what was going on there? Philosophy Tube said, I don't believe that people have, specifically have, gender dysphoria. And I don't think that we should call being dissatisfied with your body gender dysphoria in a clinical setting. It is the exact same context that we des described in the previous video. The exact same argument that I laid out in a previous video. It's so unbelievably obvious how 
out of context this was taken in order to specifically generated to to build up a dog pile to build up a signal that oh uh uh philosophy tube has done thing wrong philosophy tube has the wrong opinion don't you see philosophy tube is one of those ones and i think it's disgusting and i oppose it Manticore points out, which she's saying that it's a category error because gender dysphoria isn't unique to being trans and the medicalization of it by cis people is oppressive. Yes, that's literally what we were talking about in the last video. That's what I just summarized here. Exactly. Precisely. A lot of, of fighting. There's been a lot of commentary. There's been a lot of uh, tangential issues. People have tied this into all kinds of different subjects. Um, I mean, fuck, people have said that, like, my position and therefore Abby's position is that we don't want trans issues to be covered by healthcare. And I want to, that argument is actually insane to me. I feel like it's one of the most bad faith arguments. I've seen multiple people say, oh, so you don't want, so you're trying to make it so that, so that it won't be covered by insurance anymore. And I'm like, no, motherfucker. What are you talking about? Tr Cis people's HRT is covered by by insurance under pre-existing categories. Cis people don't need a special carve out to have their HRT covered. They are given it by their doctor when they need it and it is covered because it is a medical requirement because we all universally acknowledge that being deeply dissatisfied with your body in any way does not have to be some sort of special thing. It's just something that sometimes happens and you can fix it with a cheap fucking medication. And again, I don't know. I guess this all just brings it back around to the fact that I, I truly think, I, I, I think that the discourse and that the atmosphere and the way that people have been engaging in politics online is completely done for. Um, and I don't know when, when Brianna Wu says it's fairly obvious our current strategy isn't working. I don't know what she's talking about. Whose strategy? Hasn't the predominant strategy for trans people, um, at least according to the Democratic establishment, been fundraising, fundraising legislation and lobbying? And it has actually been incredibly highly motivated small pockets of people that have managed to make any sort of impact on that at all because fundraising, legislation, lobbying is, ex is essentially inaccessible to trans people. Trans people are cut out of these spaces. Trans people are marginalized. Trans people have st statistically an incredibly hard time staying afloat financially and economically, let alone getting the money to do fundraising and lobbying. And if it's true, if Brianna Wu is correct that fundraising legislation and lobbying is what we have to do, then it's up to the rich trans people to do that. Poor people don't have anything else to give. Only the rich ones. So, with all due respect, Brianna and ContraPoints being two very, very rich trans people, increase those contributions. Because you're the only ones with the money to do it. Oh, true, okay. Yeah, I don't know if Brianna is actually trans. That's true. But she's talking on trans issues. So same thing goes. Allies are included in that as well. Things are pretty bad right now, politically, okay? Uh, things are pretty bad right now, politically. There is a massive, uh, massive, massive uh, 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 propaganda campaign against the LGBTQ community as a whole, but specifically spearheading it against trans people. And I don't know, I can't help, I, can't, I don't feel like any of this was helpful. I don't feel like any of this was in line with the principles that any of these people have outlined. And this is one of the things that I want to, uh, 
oh yeah, gender expression itself is becoming is under attack as more and more of these states pu push push anti drag laws, which make it functionally illegal to to uh, dress in clothing of the opposite gender, which is impossible to even define. It just means that the police and uh, random people have free license to hassle you. Oh, yes, yeah. Dust Aeon points out that how many people were explicitly misgendering uh, Philosophy Tube because, well, if she doesn't believe in body dysphoria, uh, then I guess uh, I guess we can just misgender her, which was, of course, the number was... I was seeing tons of that all over the place. My imps, there are 500 of you listening right now. Please... You are the freedom fighters of the internet right now, okay? You guys have the, in this moment, by being tuned into the signal, you have the opportunity to be a, an internet freedom fighter, okay? You have the opportunity to refuse to engage in a dog pile like this, to discourage people from dogpiling like this, and to present arguments, if you are going to present them, present them in a way that provides context and that encourages people to actually engage with the ideas at hand. That's my challenge. As you know, one of the only community rules that we have, not to be confused with the one rule, which that one is an actual community rule, one of the only actual, like, rules that I super, super impose on chat is we always raid with love, okay? Some people would call this rule number two, but whatever. We always raid with love. And we only raid with love. So no, no engaging in this dogpiling shit. We have the opportunity to make the conversations that we have matter. And if we're going to engage in a conversation and it doesn't seem like it's going to matter, don't engage in it, okay? Don't engage in wasteful noise. Listen for the signal. Hear the signal and help others hear the signal. Don't engage in this mindless, self-destructive uh, cycles of, of, of performative spectacle play. Be disappointed. Uh... I'm, I am a, I am a internet entertainer, okay? I'm very clear about that, all right? Most of what I talk about these days is politics in movies and in video games, and occasionally I do stuff like this. Most streams I'll do a little bit of where I discuss about a political issue or whatever, but I don't really do news stuff anymore because I don't really like that. It wasn't bringing me joy, so to say. Uh, I cover news sometimes, but, um, but, but I, I am openly, very openly, a internet entertainer uh, who's very political. But I have to say, even from my position as an entertainer, I am always severely disappointed with the state of politics online. And the people who claim to be the advocates, the people who aren't just entertainers, the people who claim to be representatives, some of them who have actually run for office, um, I just, like, what is going on? What the hell? Why? Why is there so much? The We know who our opponents are. Our opponents are the people who are actively pushing a genocidal agenda against us. Why is it so hard to not participate in these absolutely heinous and incredibly obvious dogpiles? What is it? What has arrested the, the online political spheres? that just leads to this endless, horrible, abusive behavior. People literally are feeding their own, their own to the algorithm. For what? For likes on Twitter? You know, likes aren't worth anything on Twitter anymore. You can't even make money on Twitter, let alone can you promote any of your other work on Twitter. Twitter is complete trash. It's totally fallen apart. There's a reason I rarely ever post on this stupid website anymore. Most of my posts are literal, just a joke image that I made to promote my stream, and that's it. It is useless. Fuck, even my, even, even my promotional tweet today got like 23 likes and six retweets. It's like, even, even my, the tweets that have been doing the best lately is when I mention birds. When I say, hey, cool bird, 
I saw a cool bird. That's the only thing. That's like, that's what people are, are into. That's all that you can actually get off the ground on Twitter outside of obvious conflict. Now you get involved in a fight on Twitter and all of a sudden you got a hundred thousand people screaming down your throat. The site is useless. Why are we fucking participating in cycles of abuse for that? It's pathetic. It's funny to me, by the way, this is just an additional note on this topic. It's funny to me um, how the conciliatory position always requires denouncing uh, the side that you agree with, that you, that you, like, all these conciliatory positions that are like, we need to, are, have you seen how bad things are? We need to tone down our rhetoric so that normies will get on our side. It always involves stigmatizing what you supposedly purportedly believe in. If, if, if we have to talk to normies, why does the process of this, 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 uh, you could argue that it's an assimilationist process. Why does it have to involve crunching down what you ostensibly actually believe is true? Which is that, uh, you know, trans people have a right to bodily autonomy. That trans people are equal in every way to cis people. That trans people deserve to have access to medicine in the same way, the exact same way that cis people do. Why does the conciliatory position suddenly involve selling out those core principles? For what? To, 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 so that you can win a language battle to people who believe on, uh, by and large, that you need to be eradicated from public life entirely. You cannot compromise with a group of people that have eliminationist politics. It will not work. Normies don't have that. But guess what? Normies hate the current medical system. Normies don't think that going to a psych to get uh, this, that, and the other thing is a good thing. And by saying that the only way to appeal to normies is to say that you are, that I'm a, I'm, I have a mental illness. Saying that that's the only way to appeal to normies is simply not true. And also, it reaffirms the position of the people that you are in opposition to. It reaffirms the position of the furthest right people. The trans people are somehow inherently flawed and uniquely bad in a way that cis people aren't. Despite the fact that every single fucking cis person in their entire life is going to experience body dysmorphia. They're going to experience displeasure with their body. They're going to experience hormonal imbalances. I just... I want people to get real. Okay, get real. Do we think, do we really think that if only people were nicer to the most genocidal factions in history, the factions that utilized identical rhetoric to what we are hearing be used against us today, do we really think that just being nicer or that adjusting our rhetoric to engage with them on a more, on their grounds would ever work? Did it ever work? It never has. It never will. Can't help but feel that there is some underpinning supremacy baked somewhere in this that leads people or maybe it's not an underpinning of supremacy maybe it's an uh, the opposite maybe it's an underpinning of well i guess it would in one way be accepting that there is a cis supremacy if you believe that cis people have to be met on the ground of no matter how deranged their positions are that you have to meet them and play their game every time, even though their game is literally designed to exclude you as a player. It is designed to exclude you and everyone like you as a player. I can't help but feel that that's buying into the idea that cis people are more important than trans people, which I will never accept that. Assimilation is not possible for trans people. You have to understand that. Trans people cannot assimilate into an order that is built to exclude them. In the, in the, in the, the, the status quo, the order that currently exists, every trans person is an anomaly. You are, uh, a, a, uh, you are a, a heretic to that order. That order explicitly says there are women and there are men 
And some people think that maybe you can just convince them to amend it to say, well, you know, some women can be men and some men can be women. But the truth is that that's not how the worldview operates. It's an incredibly naive perspective. Because they don't come to the conclusion that there are men and women. They don't come to the conclusion of a binary um, because of... Uh, because of because of, of one single thing. They have an, a goal in mind that they've built the binary to achieve. A goal of normativity, a goal of control, a goal of reproduction. Trans people do not engage with the structure in the same way that everyone else does. We have to challenge and fundamentally change that structure or else it will forever exclude us and many other people. And it will continue to bend people into, uh, uh, bend people into its, its, its horrible, horrible shapes. We know that ostensibly cis people suffer massively under the gender binary. We know that the current status quo tortures so many people, not just trans people either, not just people who see themselves and identify themselves as trans. That structure is built, it was built to prevent trans people, to prevent, uh, 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 you know, divergence, to prevent uh, deviance. It's a structure that is meant to control. We can't assimilate into that. And the truth, of course, that, that the wise among us recognize the, the incredibly wise among us will recognize that neither can the people who are currently in it, that they can't assimilate to it either because it is built off of insane and unrealistic standards. It is a structure of control that no one fits into naturally. It bends people to it, not the other way around. It is not formed by us in our, in our true forms. It bends us and forces us to defy our true forms. This, this is just an addendum, okay? So, but uh, but I wanted to play a, a video. Oh no, has it been gone? No, here we go. This right here is a video by Jack Saint, or rather Jack Sinner. This is Jack Saint's secondary channel. And uh, yeah, consider this the after credit scene. So this okay? morning- We're gonna play this real quick, okay? Let's watch this. I saw this tweet from Brianna Wu, uh, and to be clear, I don't really know Brianna Wu, so this isn't like an expose on them, but expressing a sentiment that I've definitely seen in a lot of different places and I thought was maybe worth addressing. Essentially saying that a lot of the problem with current trans discourse is that TERFs have a clear message while trans people and allies- Oh yeah, these were some of the tweets that got deleted. Uh, do not. So, like, a couple of days ago, uh, Buck Angel, who's kind of a turf uh, trans man, uh, did this post where he was talking about how he hates how people try to use his image as a way to rebut turf talking points. Because often the main argument with turfs is that they want to protect women within women's spaces by making sure that people only go to bathrooms that are assigned uh, by gender. Because, of course, uh, the doors of the gender, they're kind of like magical force fields that prevent anyone uh, who doesn't have the correct gender from entering. And people use the image of Buck Angel, who's, you know, a trans man that has clearly made, like, a very strong effort to pass, and saying, you know, this guy was assigned female at birth. Are you saying that he should now have to go into women's restrooms? And, and his response to that was to say that he, as a transsexual, has made an effort to pass and that therefore he kind of is exempt from what they're trying to say. So I didn't realize that actually the feminist talking point here was that you need to adequately pass as a woman to be allowed into a bathroom. I didn't realize that that was 
that that was the message that was being sent, but apparently it was because it seems like Buck got a lot of positive engagement from TERFs for that tweet. So, the idea is that biological sex is the thing that determines whether or not you're allowed in a bathroom. However, if you don't really look enough like a woman or enough like a man, uh, that, that, that's the thing that will actually dictate what bathroom you're allowed to go in. Do you, you all know this. We've talked about turf stuff on here all the time. We've pointed out this exact sleight of hand. They do it all the time. And whenever it's convenient, they'll pretend that it's about effort. They'll pretend that it's about trying to pass, but, they, but we all know it's not. And we know that their rhetoric doesn't reflect that, that they fixate on biological uh, uh, essentialism constantly. It's in all of their rhetoric. And it's only when it's convenient for them to have some sort of political win that they'll pretend otherwise. It's not coherent. Their ideology is not coherent and it doesn't make sense to people. Um, definitely can't see any negative consequences of that. So yeah, I just feel like, for me, it's always been very intuitive to think, oh, people have the right to express themselves in a variety of ways, uh, and part of that is going to include kind of breaking down these barriers of the gender binary. It just seems very straightforward to me, and this turf idea that we're like, kind of going on biological sex, and we're also kind of going on like, this aesthetic thing, um, I don't think it comes off as coherent at all, and I really feel like it's just kind of pandering to conservatives. Uh, to continue to push that talking point. Uh, okay. I thought that was a fun little after credit sequence for us to enjoy. A little thing to consider about the idea that, you know, turf talking points are super coherent to the masses. Uh, when in truth, they're not. It's just that, ev that there is so much propaganda uh, asserting that this is the way the world must be. You know, it's kind of funny. It reminds me of like, uh, it reminds me of like the atheism era. Remember? Um, remember when like people would, would like in the atheism era, people would post like their amazing gits of them like talking uh, with their family at, uh, at, Chris at like Christmas or whatever. And they would do things like they would say, so if God's all powerful and all knowing, can he create a rock that is so big that he can't lift it? And then their parents would go, well, well, whatever. And then people would go, ooh, get, get, ooh, get. You know, they would do that kind of thing. The whole point, the reason why those are kind of funny is because it points out that there isn't a coherent ideology there, that people are attached to these things for emotional reasons, that they are attached to them for irrational reasons. They are bashed into these structures oftentimes. Now, obviously, in this particular case, well, the omnipotence of God is often bashed into people. It is often, like, literally indoctrinated into them. But what I'm trying to point out here is that, like, the, the idea that, like, uh, bending your argument to fit theirs in every single circumstance is always the right answer. Um, it's just simply not true. It isn't always true that, uh, that adjusting your, 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 what you're advocating for, and it's especially not true if it requires you to give up on your principles and give up on the very things you're fighting for to try and engage with a incoherent structure. Uh, people buy into these things for all manner of reasons, but most of all, they buy into them because they've been indoctrinated into that. Gender ideology. What everybody talks about as gender ideology. When, when, when conservatives say gender ideology, they're talking about trans people. Oh, but the truth is that we are in, we are inundated in gender ideology. Our entire lives, from the moment that we're born, boys wear blue, girls wear pink, boys play with trucks, girls play with dolls. We are constantly uh, uh, inundated and indoctrinated with this ideology of gender that we know isn't true. We know there are girls who don't like dolls. We know there are girls who don't like pink. We know that, that even just a couple of generations ago, these were not the same rules. The structure of control is, is, is deranged. It is not good. It is broken. And we should fight against it. And we should not fucking torch each other for no reason.